Hey, this is Liam, your narrator. Just want to say a very quick thank you to all of you listening, watching, commenting, liking, subscribing, sharing and all of that good stuff. It really helps out the channel and is much appreciated and very encouraging for me. So with all that said, let's get into the story. A few stories about a friendly ghost named Dave. I posted this first in the Ask Reddit subreddit a long time ago and figured this would be a good place to share a few encounters with a ghost. Not a mean spirited one but rather a more polite ghost who usually referred to himself as Dave. Never saw him. Ever. But the best way to describe his voice is an elderly hardcore smoker answering you from another room. His voice is always muffled but rough and coarse. Here are a few stories with Dave, edited for some clarification. The first time I ever actually heard Dave was when I was nine. I was in the living room reading a Batman comic book. I heard Dave asking me if Batman was fighting the Joker. I mindlessly just answered, yeah, you can read this after I'm done. Took my young brain a minute before realising that There was no one else in the house with me to ask me that at the time. My mum once told me she was taking laundry to her room when suddenly she bumped into something large and invisible, making her fall backwards with the laundry. She then heard Dave exclaim, Oh, I'm so sorry, are you okay? My mum saw no one, but she did feel like there was someone helping her get up as well as pointing out where all her fallen clothing went. In my lifetime, we had about seven cats who have lived with us. Every now and then, I'll see one of them rolling over and enjoying someone or something petting them. Never could get it on camera though. In high school, I got a few friends to bring out a Ouija board to my house in hopes to talk to Dave. Before we could even begin, the little triangle thing that comes with the board vanished without a trace. Me and my friends were confused until we heard Dave say in a rough voice, No, not this time. There is someone outside that you do not want to invite in here. Me and my friends just sat there in silence. Then we put the board away, only taking it out to burn it a few months later during summer camp. Only once did I ask why Dave haunted our house. His response to this question was him knocking on the walls, leading me to my bedroom door. I opened it up, looked inside, and felt him push me into my room and close the door on me. He basically sent me to my room for asking him such a personal question. Never brought it up since. There hasn't been much activity of him since 2004, and my parents who still live there think he's moved on. He was a great ghost, and I do hope that he's in a better place now. Don't open that door. So here's a little background context. This past Thanksgiving was hard for my family. It was the first Thanksgiving without my biological grandmother, who I called Nana, but we spent it with her life partner, my other grandmother, who I called Nani. So now that that's out of the way, I'm gonna tell you what happened. On this particular Thanksgiving, Me and Nani and my half-brother were sitting in the living room reminiscing on past Thanksgivings we spent with Nana when we heard something fall in the master bedroom. Nani had closed the door to keep the dogs out of there so no one and nothing was in there. We brushed it off and decided to put on a movie and were watching it when we heard voices coming from the room. We paused the movie to listen but we couldn't quite make out what they were saying. We assumed it was just the neighbours and were about to continue the movie when we heard a voice call out for Nani in my Nana's voice. Only it wasn't her, of course, we all knew it. Again, the voice called out. This time it was for me and her tone was urgent, like she was hurting. Help me, we heard her cry. My older brother, who's never really encountered or cared for the supernatural, was shaking. And when he went to get up, my nani shouted, 
something that she's never done. Don't open that door! Again, we heard Nana crying while pounding on the door. And then when the clock hit 11.52pm, everything went quiet. And that was the time that she died. Till this day, we haven't spoken of what happened. And Nani had me sage the entire house the next day. Hospital visit. When I was two years seizure free, I had to undergo a test called the epilepsy monitoring unit. Basically, I'd spend five days and nights at the hospital while I stopped taking my meds and sleep deprived. I could bring anything I wanted and my dad was there in case anything did happen. And of course, there was the nurse call button that would alert a nurse in case I did need anything. I could see this ghost, not with my physical eyes, but almost as if I could feel and see what she looked like. She was a young nurse who wore a white uniform and button-up skirt, as well as a white hat like a square, with a red cross on it. I don't know what time period it's from, and I wasn't sure why she was that young or still in the hospital room. But she would visit occasionally and do her job, checking on me, asking if I needed anything. It felt silly to me, but to her, it was all real. Her presence was sad. Over time, I felt there was a boy as well, a child between five and eight, that she tended to in this hospital room. She was never able to save him, and I assumed that's why she was still in the room. It got to about 2am and eventually I had a seizure. All I remembered was coming out of it, looking at my dad and physical nurse with an oxygen mask. Once the nurse made sure I was well enough, she left the room. My dad then shared that my heart had stopped. He had held me in his arms, pressing the nurse's call button over and over as I flatlined. He felt like he was going to lose me and never wanted anyone to feel the way he did. I didn't even process it all, I was just too shocked, but I was glad I was alive. Time has passed and I never felt the presence of a ghostly nurse again, but then I realised something. She'd been gone since my seizure, since I flatlined. She may not have saved her old patient's life, but she saved mine, and now she can rest peacefully after a long, long time. Hey, it's Liam again. This is a little Easter egg for all of you who have stayed right up until the end. Big thank you to all of you. And I look forward to sharing more stories with you very soon in the next video. Take care.